Welcome back. Uh, let's continue our discussion about policy gradient methods. Uh, in the previous lecture, we had talked about uh, three different problems with policy gradient. So remember, policy gradient is trying to do stochastic gradient descent using the simulator data uh, in order to compute the policy directly without necessarily going through uh, uh, without necessarily going through the uh, value iteration or policy iteration type of algorithm. Okay, so uh, the issue with policy gradient is because it's running a stochastic gradient descent type of algorithm, it, uh, it's, it, it, it has very high variance and therefore you would like to use some idea to reduce the variance in the policy gradient method and one of the ideas is to use a critic network which will reduce the variance but introduce bias into the training process. The other idea was when you are doing a important sampling, so I want to very briefly touch upon the important sampling idea. So in important sampling you have rho of A given S equals to pi A given S over pi B A given S. So you have the trajectory, trajectory obtained through base policy pi b okay so let's say somebody was driving a car and you collected the s a s prime as well as the reward data from that particular driver's uh, policy and now you want to come up with v pi or some approximation of v pi so you want to estimate what the value function corresponding to this new policy pi is so you have to use this important sampling weight. And uh, typically what happens is uh, consider a situation where a base policy in some specific state doesn't take an action but the target policy at that state takes that action then this ratio is going to become infinity. Right. So if pi b a given s equals to 0 or close to 0 and pi a given s is greater than 0 then this would imply that rho a given s will be close to infinity right so that's the situation where the important sampling weights can blow up if there is a mismatch between the base policy that you use to get the data and the target policy that you would want to um, estimate so the other idea there is to you to, to clip the important sampling weight so that it doesn't blow up to infinity. So that's another idea and we will look at one specific instance of that particular algorithm. And then the third problem is if you make a minor change in the critic network then it can bring a huge change in the policy network in the uh, in the policy because uh, uh, remember I was drawing this figure where you move from this region to this region here d1 is the optimal policy here d2 is the optimal policy and as soon as you move from this particular point to this particular point there is a minor change in the value function but there is a huge change in the policy and uh, you would not want to have such a situation so therefore you use trust region optimization where um, you are just looking you are just trying to optimize the policy. Um, you're just trying to optimize over a very small region within the policy space. So we'll see variance instances of, uh, uh, so we are going to see various algorithms that are using one or many of these ideas in order to uh, better do policy gradient method. So remember the, uh, the idea in actor critic method is you have an actor that computes a policy and a critic which tries to evaluate the policy and come up with a value function corresponding to that policy or some approximation thereof. Okay. So, um, uh, so let's, let's study some of the actor critic methods with multiple variations which addresses some of the issues that we see in policy gradient method. So the first one which we have seen earlier is deep deterministic policy gradient. So you have a critic network and you have uh, a policy which is parameterized by theta mu and both of this could be neural networks for instance. Um, in fact its name is deep deterministic policy gradient so certainly both of them are neural networks in this case and mu would be uh, 
um, I mean, it depends on theta mu, uh, but it maps the state space to some probability distribution over action, assuming that you have finite set of actions here. If you have continuous action, then of course mu will map directly state to the action space. So um, you initialize the uh, target network q prime and mu prime, and then you collect the data. You take an action and you add some exploration term here. Uh, it could be a Gaussian noise, it could be a Boltzmann noise, it could be a Boltzmann gumbel kind of distribution, whatever you want to pick. Okay, so you pick an action according to the current policy and the exploration noise. Uh, then you execute the action, you get the trajectory, and then you sample a mini batch of n transitions. Okay, so you don't pick the entire trajectory, you just pick some samples from that trajectory in order to compute the value. So now you have to do the regression, right? So you come up with the target value and the target uh, uh, this and you get come up with the loss function. This loss function L is a function of theta Q. And then you try to minimize the loss function using the usual gradient descent type idea. And then you update the target network and you update the policy mu prime. Where did you get the derivative? Oh, there it is. Uh, so this is the this is the derivative of the cost function, the overall objective j as uh, remember j of theta is uh, v mu theta at maybe s naught, some initial state. You compute the derivative of j with respect to theta mu here and then you update the uh, policy. Um, so you use theta mu prime equals to theta mu minus. Oh, it's going out of page. So let me increase the page width. So you use theta mu prime equals to theta mu minus some step size beta t into j okay and uh, this is of course under the assumption that you're minimizing the cost so otherwise you have to do gradient ascent if you're maximizing the reward then you have to add the gradient so nonetheless you, you compute theta mu prime and you update it uh, here and then you uh, update the theta q by minimizing this loss function and then you update it in this particular iteration and this is the ddpg algorithm where you're using a critic a simple critic to uh, reduce the variance of the policy gradient method so this is the policy gradient step here where you're taking the gradient with respect to the policy itself okay the next idea is the trust region policy optimization. So this one is coming from a 2017 paper. And the main idea of trust region policy optimization hinges on this particular lemma. You can look at the appendix of this paper for a proof of this lemma. So the lemma is the value function at some, in, at some initial state with respect to policy pi tilde is equal to the value function with respect to policy pi and then expectation with respect to pi tilde of the advantage function, this is the advantage function. Uh, the, so the discounted sum of the advantage function where this st and at, this term. So this is a function, this advantage function is computed for the policy pi, but the trajectory st and at is computed using the policy pi tilde. Okay, so that's why you have the expectation with respect to pi tilde. And this is the proof where you you sample a trajectory with respect to pi tilde and you want to take the expectation of this discounted sum. And then remember the advantage function is given by the reward plus gamma discount factor multiplied by v pi minus v pi of st. So that's the advantage function. So a pi equals to q pi minus v pi and q pi is r plus gamma v pi well gamma v pi at the next state so let me just write it r st plus gamma v pi st 
minus st plus 1 minus b pi st so that's what you see here okay and then you do the usual expectation and you get this expression so that's the uh, so of course when you're taking the expectation you fix the initial state to be s naught so this expectation is just equal to b pi s naught and uh, this is exactly equal to v pi tilde this part the second part is equal to v pi tilde s0 s0 is the initial state okay so this tells you that if you want to compute the uh, value function corresponding to a policy pi tilde then you should know the value function corresponding to pi you should create a trajectory corresponding to pi tilde and then you can and you if you know the advantage function corresponding to pi you can take the discounted sum take the expectation and that will give you an the value function corresponding to pi tilde so this is the key idea okay once you have understood this idea then um, then you can do the policy optimization in this way so remember the idea in trust region is you have some objective function this is theta you have the objective function and if you are currently at this theta old and you want to minimize the objective uh, you want to take a step in the direction of the minimum point then you try to op uh, approximate the function and in the neighborhood of theta old and then you uh, do a gradient descent uh, for this particular objective function in this particular neighborhood that's the idea of trust region optimization so you have a complicated optimization you simplify it in this way so it, this is the idea of so th this is exactly what we are going to do so this is the uh, old value function um, we don't particularly care about it because v old doesn't depend on theta so this does not depend on theta okay theta is what we are interested in we want to maximize with respect to theta this is the occupation measure with respect to the old policy this is the new policy that you want to evaluate um, and this is the uh, advantage function with respect to the old policy okay so pi tilde here is the old policy sorry pi is the old policy and pi tilde is the new policy and uh, this is the occupation measure of the state corresponding to old policy and this is the trust region so this is how you restrict the search for theta which is in the neighborhood of theta old uh, so this is the kullback leibler divergence uh, corresponding to the two policies where you multiply uh, this with the probability of the occupation measure of the state so this is the discounted uh, rho theta old s is the discounted uh, probability gamma raised to t t equals 0 to infinity gamma raised to t p of s t equals to s given s 0 and the policy pi theta old okay and i think 1 over 1 minus gamma okay that's the uh, discounted uh, sum of the probability that the state is going to be in this the state is going to be s so you take the average of kullback leibler divergence with respect to this measure and then that has to be less than equal to delta so this is the trust region policy optimization trpo this is the theta nu okay so you do this maximization at every point of time so what you do is of course you collect samples and use the samples to evaluate an approximation to this sum and this doesn't depend on theta so you can kind of ignore it completely um, you can 
uh, use a Lagrange relaxation to push this as part of the objective function and theta appears here and you collect the trajectory and then you evaluate this whole thing maybe a, an approximation to it uh, add this particular term here and uh, get the value of theta nu and that's known as TRPO algorithm trust region policy optimization now proximal policy optimization uh, goes a uh, one step further where the advantage function is estimated using uh, t time steps of the td lambda types update so this is the update scheme for the advantage function okay which follows a td lambda kind of uh, iteration and then you you use the old policy for t time steps then you compute the advantage estimates using td lambda types update and then you optimize the loss function with respect to theta using k epochs of the uh, of the uh, trajectories and using some sort of mini batch okay and then you update the value of theta now what kind of loss functions you can pick so there are multiple loss functions uh, this is the oh I have been using rho both for um, so rho is used pure both for importance denoting importance uh, weights uh, in some papers as well as uh, occupation measure not the occupation measure but the discounted occupation measure for the state um, so now of course uh, there may be some confusion so let's um, uh, uh, just refer to the paper so i'm always going to give you the name of the paper which i'm using for explaining the algorithm so just always go back and look into the paper when you when you get into the implementation of some of these algorithms okay so this is the importance weight so sometimes we use rho sometimes in this particular paper they use rt theta uh, this is the importance weights uh, okay so this is uh, without any clipping so that certainly in some situations the um, the importance weights could be very it could blow up so this becomes a problem can blow up okay so then you have to do something else um, so what you do is you clip you clip the um, importance weights in some specific fashion and uh, that allows you to not have the blow up of uh, importance weight problem and this is the KL penalty part so this is you using the kullback leibler divergence between the old policy and the new policy and this is precisely what I was uh, uh, referring to so this is same as trpo algorithm but with importance weight okay so this is the original trpo algorithm uh, with the importance weight because now you are trying to sample from some other policy uh, but uh, uh, so this is TRPO with importance weight and the other ones are uh, the new algorithms proximal policy optimization algorithms where the key idea is that the advantage update is done using a TD lambda fashion and the loss functions involve some sort of important sampling um, in the process okay uh, now let's talk about the advantage actor critic algorithm so Again, this is the advantage function. And you use this sort of update scheme for the advantage function. So remember in the previous case, uh, it was a TD lambda type update. In this situation, it's not a TD lambda type update. It's just a K step rollout kind of update where you sample the trajectory. Uh, you take the discounted sum of the reward, use this as the terminal reward 
uh, in for computing the advantage function and this is the current estimate of the value function um, uh, and then you uh, compute the policy so you your actor computes the policy and you compute the critic computes the advantage functions a and the actor a and perhaps value function v and the actor sends pi slash mu depending upon what you are using the notation for policy so remember that you can always compute uh, the optimal policy using the advantage function as well because the advantage function is just a shifted version of q function so a equals to q minus v which means that argmax of a s a equals to argmax of a q s a okay so just by doing the argmax of the advantage function you can compute the policy and you can do the actor critic uh, in this way so this is known as advantage actor critic now there is no uh, it, it's not clear by reading the papers in this field as to why advantage function is useful but my gut feeling is that a q function may be very difficult to store using a neural network because it could be highly nonlinear but because you have subtracted the value function from it the advantage function is not as nonlinear and therefore uh, using a neural network or using some other method to uh, compute advantage function might be much easier than trying to compute the q function or the value function and use that for computing the policy so that's my my hunch or that's my intuition but i'm not sure because no one has actually written down why advantage function is advantageous in the uh, actor critic method moving on to the next topic which is advanced asynchronous advantage actor critic so a3c which is uh, which used to be considered state of the art at uh, in 2016-2017 so this was in this algorithm the idea is that you have the actor you have the critic but you don't have one actor you have multiple actors so you are running your simulation in parallel uh, across multiple machines and all of them are sending data to the critic the critic combines all the data updates the advantage function a slash v and then sends back to each of these actors maybe i should use a different color okay so this is advantage function and value function advantage function and value function okay so the goal of these actors is merely to simulate the policies uh, that uh, corresponding to that particular advantage function the current estimate of the advantage function that they have so this is asynchronous algorithm and uh, this is the pseudo code for the q learning part but the pseudo code for the actor critic aspect or the a3c algorithm which is asynchronous advantage actor critic is also similar so you can take a look at it um, that's the um, that's the state of the art asynchronous advantage actor critic method then there is soft actor critic method which is just like trust region optimization um, you have a value function uh, network you have a q function network you have a policy network and then you take the derivative with respect to all these different weights for the corresponding uh, uh, objective functions for the policy objective function for the q function objective function for the value function and then this the psi bar is somehow used in the objective function in this particular jq so this is used in jq to improve stability um, so definitely go through the paper soft actor critic paper sorry i forgot to write it but i'll i'll definitely uh, upload it in the final uh, when i upload the lecture notes i'm going to write down what the which paper this comes from 
um, so you do the gradient update and instead of looking for a policy which is uh, which could be anywhere in the space you restrict yourself to policies that are the argmin with respect to this particular kullback leibler divergence so that's known as soft actor critic okay one of the advantage of soft actor critic method is that because you are using some sort of exponential function, uh, all actions have positive weights. And because all actions have positive weights, this particular action will also have a positive weight. So uh, all actions will have positive weights. So no matter which policy you pick, all actions will have positive weights and therefore you will get ample opportunity to explore all possible actions. So this is of course finite action setting but you could have continuous state space. <clears throat> then there is a actor critic with experience replay, Acer. Um, the idea is to trim the importance weights as we have talked about earlier and then use the trust region. Actually, the idea is to linearize the constraint within the trust region. So um, you can go to this particular paper to read what the details of the algorithm is but in short uh, you compute the gradient <coughs> this is the clipping of the clipping of uh, the importance weight and then you this is the linearization around the trust region or linearization within the trust region. Um, this linearization is with respect to the policy network. So phi theta is the policy network here. Um, this is the policy, remember, and phi theta xt is the weights of the policy. So um so that's the uh, that's the idea here in the in the specific algorithm acer so actor critic with experience replay so the key idea is that you use past experience so, so remember in the earlier cases for every update you have to generate a trajectory now in this particular algorithm um, you can use the past trajectories which potentially was computed using some different policy uh, you can still use them in the um, actor critic algorithm so so that's the algorithm called acer so actor critic with experience replay which involves trimming the importance weight and linearizing around uh, within the trust region and um, you know compare it with trpo i guess with trpo and ppo proximal policy optimization very similar ideas with minor changes here and there to improve the sample efficiency and then the i come to the final algorithm for policy gradient method which is actor critic using chronicler factor trust region uh, i'm not going to explain in complete detail what this algorithm is doing but i want to uh, motivate the discussion uh, with the first lecture or maybe second lecture of optimization that you may have taken. So remember that in the gradient method, so let's say you have a J which maps theta to you have a function J that maps R into R. So J of theta is in R and you want to minimize or let's say you want to maximize j of theta then the idea is you run a gradient ascent algorithm which is theta k plus 1 equals to theta k plus beta k gradient of j at theta k okay now suppose i ask you to improve the convergence speed of this algorithm what are you going to do 
Well, you're going to say that let's assume that you have second derivative and then you can use Newton's method. which is theta k plus 1 equals to theta k plus beta k some dk inverse gradient of theta j theta k where dk is the second derivative. of uh, j evaluated at theta k. Now you will say, oh, well, I have to compute this derivative and then I have to take the inverse, so it's too complicated, too, too much time consuming. Then you say, okay, let's just do some approximate Newton's method. Where you pick, where you, basically you have the same algorithm, but your dk is now an approximation or dk inverse is now an approximation to j theta k inverse and uh, more importantly you want to make sure that this computation is very very lightweight okay so that's the idea we had studied in the uh, in the optimization class and the idea in uh, Kronecker factor trust region, the idea is very similar where <clears throat> you compute dk in a very specific fashion. So, so, so what's the problem here? Well, the problem is this is true in the case where you can compute the gradient and the second derivative or an approximation to the second derivative. Um, if you knew the function, now in this situation you don't know the function and you rely on trajectories in order to compute some of these gradients or stochastic gradients. Uh, so, how do you compute dk inverse? Well, one of the ideas that is um, that we talked about in the case of natural policy gradient was that you pick uh, what is known as Fisher information matrix. So, let's say your j was a function of theta and some noise w and you wanted to minimize with respect to w which is the noise. So, the Fisher information matrix is defined as follows. Uh, let me call it dk equals to expected with respect to w of gradient theta j theta w gradient theta j theta k theta k transpose okay so now this is a so this matrix is a positive semi definite matrix it's actually a rank 1 matrix So each of this matrix is a rank 1 matrix, but because you are taking an expectation, you are perhaps adding a lot of rank 1 matrices or you are taking an integration of a lot of rank 1 uh, matrices, um, which would lead you to potentially a positive definite matrix. Under very reasonable assumptions, one can show that this is actually positive definite matrix. And because it is positive definite, you can come up with some approximation schemes for inverting this expectation and you can use that along with and you can estimate that with the trajectories. So remember this is expectation with respect to W. Now you have a lot of samples of W using your simulator. So you can compute this expectation, you can perhaps invert it using some lightweight operations. Or, or get some approximation to the inverse and then plug it in here to plug it in here to speed up the computation okay so that's the uh, the idea of uh, actor critic using Kronecker factor trust region so <coughs> you use some um, so so in actor
use DK inverse or some approximation of inverse of Fisher information matrix. gradient ascent okay so this is one way to improve the sample complexity of the overall optimization problem so we all know that gradient descent is extremely slow <clears throat> in comparison to Newton's method or, or rather I should say Newton's method is quite fast in comparison to gradient vanilla gradient descent method so <clears throat> we should always attempt to somehow estimate the curvature of the objective function and use that to uh, improve the convergence of the algorithm. So that's what actor attempts to do. So with that I end my discussion on policy gradient methods using actor critic approaches and uh, in the next class we, I'm going to talk about uh, temporal difference methods.